Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. We are at London Regionals, not Huddersfield. I'm trying this whole live commentating thing one more time, so I am actually watching this and recording it as it happens, hence why, in the middle of uploading a whole bunch of Week 1 Regionals games, I am going ahead and giving you some games from Week 3. Week 2 are coming, Sutton Coldfield Regionals. We've got London Regionals first. On the left, we've got Seb Simmons. He's playing, looks like Manectric Bats, so he plays a a couple of balls straight away he's got a couple of Zubat and he's going for a shaman going to use that setup ability which is going to allow him to draw until he has six cards in his hand so hopefully he's going to well hopefully for him I don't really care I have no rooting interest in this but hopefully for him he's going to be able to draw a bunch of cards and get set up now in the previous round we saw the uh, round seven and we saw that Manectric we saw fighting bats now we've got Manectric bats what's your sin playing I haven't got the absolute foggiest, ladies and gentlemen, because all we can see is a shaman, which is unfortunate. Uh, yeah, hey-ho. So there goes Zubat, and he's got the energy, and he's got the muscle band, and he's got a shaman for five. Only supporter we've seen so far is a Lissandra, unfortunately, but we see a Manectric. Um... And then we see another level ball. I would have liked to have seen him put the energy on the Manectric, because remember, a two-energy Manectric can one-hit KO a Shaman. It does 60, or if the opponent's Pokemon has a tool on, it does 120. But do remember, ladies and gentlemen, that he needed those cards from the Shaman. Shaman, he can't attack what turn one. So for him, he was probably happier just going ahead and playing it. You know, he'd rather miss the energy attachment but get the extra cards. Um, again, just like that, um, just like the Head Ringer. Obviously, you like to play the Head Ringer on a different Pokemon, but he wants to be able to use those Shamins. What does he want this turn, though? He's already put his energy down. He's already filled up his bench. What is he actually after? Well, my guess would be Bats. I assume he'd quite like a, um, a muscle band for the Manectric, but what he wants is a whole bunch of bats. He wants to be able next turn to drop two gold bats, ready to drop two crow bats on turn three. Whatever Yasin is playing, he does not want to be seeing a barrage of bats. Um, I don't know what Yasin is playing, unfortunately. I've, I've not been privy to much information. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I wasn't at this tournament. I was a little bit poorly today. Sympathy in the comments, if you please. Oh, and he plays a trainer's mail for the Sycamore. Did get slightly confused then. Um, and I've just seen a little post on Facebook from Carl Blake. Me and Michael Cormel have both made cuts at London with Gengar, Wobbuffet, Hammers. You heard that right. Gengar. I can also tell you that Joe Bernard has gone and made top eight with an Evil Town Vespaquen list that we kind of worked on together. So I'm... I'm a little bit sad, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a little bit sad because if I hadn't been too poorly to go to the tournament, I would have been playing the same list with which Joe Bernard went 5-1-1. But enough about me. Yasin plays an Ultra Ball, getting rid of a Sycamore and a Sacred Ash. Yasin also has bats. What's he going to be going for? Is he playing Lucario bats or is he playing Manectric bats? Or is he playing something altogether different? I don't know is the honest answer. Um, yeah. We shall see, ladies and gentlemen. So down comes a Zubat. Now, Yasin's going to have to be careful. We know Seb's got at least one Gengar. Uh, one, whatchamacallit, one Crobat. Now, the good news is that we now, we don't have the Fighting Forces Zubat. That's the one that gives you free retreat if it's got no energy attached. Usually a bad thing. Good here because it's only got 40 HP, whereas that Zubat's got uh, 50. But if Seb were to drop two Golbats, put 40 damage on it, then even if Yasin evolves into a Golbat next turn to put it up to 80, one Crobat from Zed would then KO the Golbat on Yasin's side. So it is in danger of giving up an easy prize to Seb if Seb can stream the bats like he would like. Now... Here, I think dropping that energy on the um, Zubat rather than the Manectric, it is going to be able to allow him to retreat it, which is going to be good. You know, he's, he's going to need a switch or something like that. But, yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate for him 
that he's not got them electric in the active, especially if your sin fails to get that shaman out of said active. So an energy comes down, and it looks like he's playing psychic energy here. So I don't know whether there's going to be some kind of Gengar going on here, or... It's going to be very interesting to see what this deck actually is. Um, or it might just be Wobbuffet Bats, you know. It might just be as simple as Wobbuffet Bats. We see a Shuppet there. Remember, Shuppet's got the um, attack which gets rid of a special energy attached to any of your opponent's Pokemon, not just the active. And we did see a Wobbuffet there. Remember that Wobbuffet turns off abilities other than Psychic Pokemon, so Wobbuffet will not turn off the Bats for either party. So it looks like your Sin might just be playing a straightforward Wobbuffet Bats here, in which case... He is potentially going to struggle to keep up with Manectric. What Seb is going to want to do against all of his kind of instincts, Seb is going to want to ignore the shame in and start getting rid of those bats. Because if he can get rid of those bats and Yasin is just attacking with Wobbuffet, he gone loose. There's no way he's going to win this game. Wobbuffet, remember, does 10 damage plus 10 for each damage counter already on i.e. it does as much damage as you've got, plus 10. So if Seb can take out all of those bats, it means that Yasin, you know, is, is not going to be doing very much. Now, this is a lot to ask for, but if Seb could drop two goal bats, and then he could Lissandra the Zoo, and put them both on one Zubat, and then he could Lissandra a different goal bat, Zubat, and hit it with a muscle band attached... He could actually KO both the Zubats in one turn. Clearly not going for that. Um, oh, no, he couldn't. Sorry, no, he'd still only... No, he would. He would. Now, that's... <laughs> it's a lot to ask for. But there was a play by which Seb... And we've already seen one, two goal bats here. So there was a play where he drops both the goal bats on one Zubat. Lissandra's up the other Zubat, pops down a muscle band, and actually KOs both the Zubats in one turn. Now, difficult, admittedly. Oh, oh, he's missed a trick here, ladies and gentlemen. This is not... No, I don't like this. Oh, no, no, he's not attacking with the... Um, he's not attacking with the Manectric. Why is... Yeah. Okay. Remember Zubat... Um, so the goal bat there does 10 to all of them. With the muscle band, he does 30. Hence, but then he does 10 to all of them. So you see 10 to um to all the Pokemon there. Which is why they've you know, all got 10 on. So, okay. Not, not the end of the world there. I would have preferred the Manectric play. If he had a muscle band, he had everything he needed to pull it off. Purely because, as I've said, if Yasin is playing Wobbuffet Bats, then... If he can't get any Wobbuffets out, there's not going to be enough damage on the Manectric. If you're sin... Ooh! Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is a Burnett coming down. Burnett comes down over the Shuppet. Can anyone remember what that card does? I'll give you a clue, ladies and gentlemen. It's got the Evolution Jammer um, attack. Your opponent can't play any Pokemon from his or her hand to evolve his or her Pokemon during his or her next turn. Now, it's only got 90 HP, but remember that regular Manectric... Oh, we see a Super Scoop up coming here, getting up the shame in. Regular Manectric only does 60 damage, unless they've got a tool attached. Your Sin's just attached a tool. Oh, he's already got three damage counters on, so it would have made no real difference here. Okay, I see that. Um, without a tool on it, um, your sin can, uh, sorry, Seb can only do 60. He can't put a um, he can't put a head ringer on because it's not an EX, and he can't evolve to Mega Manectric because Evolution Jammer will stop him. Now a lot of these Manectric Bats decks don't actually play the Mega, so it will be interesting to see if Seb does or not. So you sit there, he's playing a, he plays a Sycamore, he then plays a Trainer's Mail, and he's going to use it to get a VS Seeker. So what's he going to be able to get from this VS Seeker? That is the question. Um, I don't, I think, did he play a Sycamore a minute ago? 
might not have done. I thought he did. He might just be, you know, he plays a trainer's mail. you got to get something. You don't have to, but you want to get something. So it might just be, look, I'll, I'll grab the VSC to use it next turn. But make no mistakes about it, ladies and gentlemen. Yasin is in peril here. That Burnett is going down next turn as long as Seb's got an energy. The Golbat's got free retreat. Manectric hits for 60. Burnett's got 60 HP left. 19 minus a 30 already on him. That's going to put Seb up by two prizes and leave Yasin with a Shuppet and a 40 HP Zubat on his bench. He is going to really struggle to keep up with... This is really good against Evolution decks, but against decks with EXs that can hit nice and efficiently, it really can falter quite quickly. I've seen people play this deck before. Now, I will mention that Yasin is, if not the, then certainly one of the very best seniors in the UK. He's a phenomenal player, one who, quite frankly, I hope he stays in seniors for a couple more years because he's good. He's always around the top cut of everything. It is not a... It's not a bit of a surprise to see him in the senior final. Remember, we are at 60 minutes here, not 50. So that is not a mistake. We have still got 49 minutes to go. Um, now, there will be no Crobats coming down this turn. But that's all right. The Manectric... As long as he's got an energy, there will be a KO. And interestingly, he's gone for Skyfield in this deck rather than Rough Seas. Now, Rough Seas will be huge in this matchup because Burnett's doing 40 damage per turn if he's got a Muscle Band attached. So, Rough Seas would basically be, ha, 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 you ain't never gone kill me. And Rough Seas would... Rough Seas allows you to heal all of your electric and water energy 30 per turn. It would allow you to make sure that you're essentially sitting there and your opponent who's trying to build up damage gradually is going to have a near impossible task if you're not doing a huge amount and they're healing 30 from each of them every turn. Now we see the mystery energy come down. That's the special energy that reduces your retreat cost by two. And remember, although it's not going to be relevant here, remember that Burnett has a um, the Delta evolution ability or whatever it's called which allows you to evolve the turn you put it down so he doesn't have to have the shop it down every turn in order to evolve it so evolution jammer comes down for just 20 and now that's gonna be potentially crucial here purely but now here the rough seas is the lack of rough seas is really gonna suck because um he'd be able to heal yeah he's got 40 on him he'd be able to heal 30 off Oh, Lissandra comes down, brings up the goal bat. That's good. It's going to save 30 damage next turn. Annoyingly, Manectric is only going to be doing 80 unless Burnett's got a tool attached. And Burnett's got 90 HP. So Seb's going to be two hit KOing. But make, make no mistake about this. We see a trainer's mail come down for an AZ. Make no mistake that Seb should be considered the favorite in this particular game. Um, you know, he's, he's going to be hitting for nice... Um, consistent, low energy damage, and, you know, there's very little that Yasin is going to be able to do. Sitting there, hitting for 40 damage per turn, taking, you know, 60 damage per turn, it's not a recipe for success. I mean, he's going to be 5-hit KOing, the Manectric, there's going to be two hit KOing him back. Unless he puts down a Muscle Band, in which case Manectric will one hit KO him back. So we see a Professor Sick, uh, Professor Birch coming down here. He hits heads. So he shuffled his hand in. Because he hit heads, he'll be drawing seven, rather than the four he would have drawn had he hit a tail. So that's going to hopefully allow him to live for a turn. Now we see the 20 damage on the Burnett. Uh, remember that on the previous turn, Manectric, he brought up the goal bat. Manectric does 20 damage, plus the muscle band is 40, plus the weakness is 80. So he only needed to use the first attack to KO the, um, to KO the goal bat. And this was a really, really good play from him. Purely because he gets to KO the goal bat, but then he gets to put 20 damage on the Burnett. As I've said, Manectric really, you know, kind of tops out at 80 damage, unless, but, you know, when Burnett's already got 20 damage on, he's going to get the KO. He's going to go three prizes up, and the only thing he's missing is a Manectric with, you know, he's got a Manectric, well, which will have 60 damage on. 
here. Awesome little play. He brings up the Zubat again. Why is that good? He's got the one hit KO on the Zubat. And he can spread 20 damage. Which he's going to put on the Wobbuffet. Because again... Um, all he needs... You know... He's already done as much to the Bonnet as he needs to do. Even if the Wobbuffet comes active. And we see a Dimension Valley to bring Wobbuffet's attack cost down to 1. And Wobbuffet attacks. And he puts a Muscle Band on. That would still only do 90, putting Manectric at 150. So even Wobbuffet's not getting a KO next turn. Now, one more Evolution Jammer from Yasin takes a KO. He can then KO the Manectric with the Wobbuffet. But he will be down to one, you know, uh, Seb will be down to one prize at that stage. So Seb wisely putting the 20 damage on the Wobbuffet, realising that doing an extra 20 to that Bonnet is going to do absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things. So, you know, very, very it's a good, good, good play here. He knows what he's doing. He sees what he's doing. And I really don't see any way that Seb loses game one here. Um, now we see Lissandra coming down, pulling up the Shaman into the active. I suppose that's going to try and buy him a turn. But the question really is, buy him a turn for what? Oh, he gets the AZ. He gets the AZ off the train as Mail lets him pick up the Shaman. He's going to put uh, the Manectric back into the active and off he goes again. He's even got a second Manectric down with a Muscle Band and an Energy. So, yeah, I don't know what Yasin... And the problem is, you know, we, we can say, okay, well, Yasin should scoop and try and take it to Game 2, but I don't know what he's going to be looking to do in Game 2. Yasin's deck is built to deal with all kinds of things, but it, it's just not built to hold up to something like Seb's Manectric deck. Even maybe he starts uh, Manet maybe he starts Wobbuffet Yasin... And he scoops right there. So maybe Yasin can start Wobbuffet and get himself in a position where he's, um, you know, stopping Seb playing any uh, Shaman, stopping Seb getting set up. But even then, he just needs one shame, uh, one uh, Manectric with one energy to really get going here. So, yeah. There we go. So, we tell about a bit about Yasin Balala. Seb, Seb, um, I don't really know what to say about Seb, to be honest. He's a lovely chap. I've met him on a couple of times. Met him down Norwich. He is the son of, I believe, Seb Simmons. Uh, Seb Simmons. Scott Simmons, a lovely chap who helps to run the Norwich League, from which I've put a couple of league challenges on my channel. So, you know, lovely chap. Good pedigree. Helps out at a league which, quite frankly, I can speak no... I, I don't think I can really speak more highly of to be honest with you. So, yeah. Now, in terms of game two here, we need to be thinking, all right, what can Yasin do? Now, he needs to go Wobbuffet. Ideally, he sits behind the Wobbuffet, using his bats to pepper damage and taking the KOs with Wobbuffets. That's going to be very, very difficult indeed. The fact that Seb doesn't seem to be playing rough seas is a huge advantage for Yasin, because I'd see the game as almost unwinnable. If Seb did play rough seas. But make no mistake it, about it ladies and gentlemen. Yasin has got a real real uphill battle here. To stop Seb taking the seniors final 2-0. And going home as the regional seniors champion. Um, now in top cut of Masters. I don't know the full list. But I can tell you that. Um, like I say, Joe Bernard, for the third week in a row, has top eight of the regionals. This week, he's done it with Evil Tal Vesperquen, a deck which I suggested to him. And then he came up with a main list. We worked on it a bit together, had a bit of a chat. Really, my idea, his list, bit of input from me. Point is this. I'm too poorly to go, and he made top cut with the deck that we were both going to play. And I don't like mirrors, and it's only me and Joe that would have been playing it. But I can also tell you, like I said a bit a minute ago, Carl Blake and Michael Cormel have made top cut with Gengar Wobbuffet Hammers. Which is a very interesting deck. Hit and run deck where you hit with Gengar, you switch into the Wobbuffet. 
Um, take the KOs of Wobbuffet, not Gengar, so you never leave the Gengar in the active. You leave your opponent without non-psychic abilities, like Shaman, for pretty much the entire game, and... You then sit and hammer all their energies off just in case you weren't having enough fun. Now, Carl and Michael are friends, so the likelihood is they are the only two people playing Gengar Wobbuffet Hammers. And you see this at regionals. You see these decks, they really prey on decks. You know, like it's a kind of deck that's going to be good against Night March and against Toad Tina. And Gira Toad, Size Matina, and Night March really were the top two decks coming into this weekend, which is where I came up with the Evil Tau Vespaquen list because it's got it goes really, really positive against both of those decks. So Seb here, he starts off with a Zubat. Yasin's going first. He gets a Muscle Band on the Wobbuffet, which is good. He started Wobbuffet, which is excellent. He gets a Dimension Valley down there, and he plays the Birch. Oh, and Joe has just sent me the top eight from um, from the day. Joe has made it at 5-1-1. Carl Blake and Michael Cornwall both got in at 5-0-2. And Luke Kirkham is the number one seed with Manectric Bats at 6-1-0. Nathan McCluey, who we saw on the previous round playing Night March, is 5-1-1. And Joe is actually going to be playing against a... Gengar Wobbuffet deck, so it's going to be very interesting to see how that comes across. So, Yasin goes first, and he doesn't have a huge turn. I'm not a huge fan of putting down the um, Dimension Valley, because as I've explained on my videos before, if everybody's playing, if both players are playing four stadiums, then that means a first person who plays a stadium is going to inevitably lose a stadium war unless the other player, you know, has to juniper one or two of them later on in the game. I'd rather he save that Dimension Valley for the following turn, but, you know, he was going to... Uh, he was going to use the uh, the birch. Maybe he was scared he wasn't going to have it for the following turn. But if Seb drops down a Skyfield here, it is going to show that as a mistake of a play. But it doesn't actually look like he's got very much at all. Um, we see he's got an Ultra Ball, which under normal circumstances he would use to go and get a Shaman and start setting up. But we see that Yasin has got a Wobbuffet in the active. But here we go. As I said in the previous game, Seb can here just go with the Manectric and just start hitting a whole bunch of damage nice and quickly. He's got a second... Oh, has it just got the one energy in hand for now? Um, so... He's going to be all right for the time being. Remember that the Zubat is weak to lightning, not... Oh, he's actually he's going to get the KO here. If he's got one energy, he's going to get the KO. Seb did not counter the stadium. Wobbuffet will now be hitting for 50. 20 plus the 10 plus the 20 for the Muscle Band. Remember, he does as much as is on the defending Pokemon plus 10. That's 30 plus 10 for the Muscle Band. And this is how Yasin wins the game. This is Yasin's... Route to victory. He needs to just make sure that that Wobbuffet is in the active, and it needs to be done quickly. If Seb has a couple turns to set up, nothing's going to happen. Remember that if Seb were to draw a Lissandra, he would be able to pull up one of the bench Pokemon and then use his abilities. And we see a high five there because of the Sycamore for seven. Uh, because Wobbuffet only blocks abilities when he's in the active. So... Here we go. He's only blocking abilities when he's in the active. If Seb has got a second energy, and he doesn't, but if he draws a second energy, he's going to be absolutely fine. He's going to come up and one-hit KO that Wobbuffet, and then he'll be even on prizes, assuming Yasin gets the KO here. But what Yasin's doing in this game that he never really got to do last game, he is peppering those bats down. What does he draw? A Golbat, which is actually kind of cool, because he gets to drop the um, yeah, he gets to drop two lots of of damage down, and he's just buying time here. He retreats one Golbat into the other. Why did he take a prize there? Why, why did he take a prize? I'm confused. Looked like he took a prize. Oh, of course he took a prize. I'm an idiot. Sorry. He dropped, yeah, 
he used I forgot about that Dimension Valley. That was a really nice play from Seb there. That was awesome. He drops two goal bats down to do 40 to one of the zoo bats. He then used goal bats attack to do 10 damage to all the Pokemon on the field, including that Zubat that only had 10 HP left. And he got a KO, took a prize. He's got a Lissandra. Now, that's not the end of the world, depending on what else is in his hand. What he wants to do is save that Lissandra. If at any point he draws a, an Ultra Ball or a, um, whatchamacallim, a, a, a Shaman or anything like that, he can use a Lissandra to drag something up from the bench so that he can play the Shaman. Here... He's doing just fine. He's doing just fine. Yasin has not seemed to draw an energy with which to attack yet. Now, Seb's just got a Lissandra and a um, VS Seeker in hand. I don't believe he's got any um, any supporters in the discard pile. Yasin is going to really need to get a an energy here. And he would get the KO. Golbat has 70 HP. He's down to 50 because he's got 20 on him. Warbuffet will do 20 plus 10. That's his general attack, which is 30. Plus the 20 for the muscle band is 50, which would put him up to 70 and would indeed get the KO. But he needs the energy first. We've got that Dimension Valley down. That brings the attack cost down to just one Psychic. So Yasin is in a good position here to start getting the KO. He's, yeah. He's looking, he's looking okay. He's looking like he's in a decent position here. But he needs to take more prizes than this. He needs to get more than he's got, quite frankly. Now, the second Wobbuffet is good. But he needs the energy. And we see it's buffering there. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This is like I say. This is one of the things. If you if you're live streaming it, and I'm literally recording from the live stream, sometimes this stuff happens. I've got good internet. Um, hopefully, it will be back very shortly. Oh, it's gone offline for a second. Hopefully, just a quick blip. Oh, and here is an advert. So what we're gonna do is. Oh, I don't know. I don't want to put this advert on there. I don't like this. I don't, I'm just, let's just, ignore the advert, ignore the dog. Don't book your flight and hotel. Don't use Expedia.co.uk. I mean, you can if you really want to, but I, that, no, no Expedia. I'm trying to jump in on our stream. Hopefully the stream will be back up in a second, ladies and gentlemen. I cross my fingers and hope that that is. And we're back. Oh, naughty Expedia. I'm going to have to leave that in, live commentating. It happens. So, we see the mystery energy going down onto Wobbuffet. Not ideal. We know that these Manectric Bats techs tend to play to Enhanced Hammer. But it's going to get him the KO this turn. Also gives Wobbuffet free retreat. Brings a retreat cost of any Psychic... Remember, it can only be attached to Psychic Pokemon. Brings a retreat cost down by two. Wobbuffet having a retreat cost of two means that it brings it down to zero and gives him free retreat. So, one prize each. There goes Lissandra. And he's drawn the Shaman. He's top decked the Shaman, ladies and gentlemen. Go Seb. And that was one heck of a top deck. Now he's rolling. Now he hasn't... Un no, he's already played one. Oh, and here we go. Second energy on the Manectric. He can retreat the Golbat. Now we would need a Muscle Band to get the KO with the first attack. But he can just use the second attack to get a KO here. It's not the end of the world if he does that. And what's awesome is that, that zoo, the Golbat attack early game, putting 10 damage on everything, it's left the Crobat on 10. Crobat's got 130. Manextric's first attack without a muscle band does 60, which double for the weakness is 120. That 10 damage from the Golbat, turn 2, could be what allows Seb to one-hit KO the benched Golbat. Oh, he's got the muscle band anyway. So what he's going to want to do here is pop that muscle band down on the Manectric, free retreat the Golbat, and then he's going to be able to get the KO on the Zubat. Will you get rid of the energy, mate? Get rid of the energy. No. Get rid of the energy. You need the Muscle Band to get the one-hit KO while spreading damage. You need the VS Seeker to get the Sycamore back. You've shown me a hand. Um, yes, there we go. Good choice. That is what I'd go for. He's already got two energy on the Manectric. He's got plenty more energy in his deck. No, you don't want to get rid of an energy, but what you do want to do, he needs the Muscle Band. He needs the VS Seeker. 
He's got enough energy for this turn. He wants the energy for next turn, but he doesn't need the energy. So I thank him for showing us his hand there. That was very nice of him. Thank you very much, Seb. You're a lovely chap. So, really, really good plays from Seb there. He's used the Ultra Ball to get himself a second Shaman. <laughs> He's rolling, ladies and gentlemen. He's just Shaman twice for a total of 10 cards. This is one of the problems with Wobbuffet. As soon as he's not any active, he ain't doing nothing. Ain't doing nothing. Ultra Ball comes down now, surely. Oh, actually, he's, I was going to say surely for another Manectric. But <laughs> maybe, maybe he's going to use this for a Crobat. Yeah, there we go. That makes a lot more sense. Um, now, I'm just trying to think through the maths here. He's going to essentially be able to do 50 damage here to whatever... Because presumably he's going to drop the 30 on whatever he drops the residual damage from Manectric. So, I mean, he only needs the Wobbuffet on 30. So actually what he wants to do, yeah, is do, what he wants to do is do 30 to the undamaged Wobbuffet. And then the residual 20 to the damaged Wobbuffet. Which would put both the Wobbuffets up to 30. Which would put both of them in range no, he doesn't want to do any to the up first. No, because that Wobbuffet's got a muscle band on, so that Wobbuffet's being KO'd. What he wants to do is 20 to the, um... Yeah, he wants to do... T he wants to do the 30 from the Crobat to the Bench Crobat. No, sorry. The 30 to the Wobbuffet and the residual 20 um, to the Crobat. Yes. Because here he's going to KO these Zubat and then have 20 bench damage. But he doesn't need to do any more to the bench Wobbuffet. He wants to bring the Wobbuffets down to 80. So that Manectric's second attack with a Muscle Band does 80 and gets the KO. So he's going to want to put the residual 20 damage here onto the Crobat. Because it's wasted going anywhere else. Both the Wobbuffets are in one. No. No. Both the Wobbuffets are in. Yes. Yes. I don't know if he can hear me. No. 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 Middle. Middle. The fact that I'm live, there's a small part of me that hopes he can hear me. Like, I'm not saying he can hear me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm not saying that. That would be foolish. What I am saying is that both times he's been sitting there agonizing over a decision, I've said what he should do, and he's listened. I mean, it might just be that he's a good player, or that we're both equally bad players. Let's not discount that possibility. Seb, absolutely. And I feel for your sin here, because it always sucks when you get into the final and you turn around and you look at the matchup, and it's just horrific. It just sucks. But there's very little your sin can do here. Now, the good news is, as it stands, that Crowbat. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Everything's being one hit KO'd. Crobat's taking 160 and being killed. Both the Wobbuffets are in danger here. All that Seb needs to do is get a muscle band and an energy. Well, sorry, no, that's a lie. He needs to get one energy on the Manectric this turn, one on their next turn, and a muscle band one of those turns. And then he's absolutely golden. That's literally all he needs, and he's just going to run out this game. I don't, I really honestly don't believe. Oh, and he's just, has he just? Gone and got the KO straight away. No. I feel like your sin's taken more prizes than this. Oh, sorry, Seb's taken more. Ah, uh, never mind. Seb is just utterly, utterly in control here. He's just completely in control. Now, yeah, because he's not got a Crobat and a Zubat. Ah, uh, but yes, no, he has. He's only taken two. So now Wobbuffet is in the really nice position where he's actually doing a whole bunch of damage. Wobbuffet next turn will be doing 120 and actually getting the KO. Problem is, as long as, although I don't think Seb had the energy down last turn. So what Seb's going to really want to do here is use Lissandra to bring up the Zubat and get the KO there. Now don't get me wrong. This, the, the now active Manectric is in danger of being KO'd. There is ab Absolutely every possibility that that active Manectric is going to get KO'd at some point in the near future. But it doesn't really matter. That's still going to only take us into three prizes. And when that first one goes down, there's nothing really to... I mean, I don't see how he's going to take down the second Manectric. It's going to take him a couple of turns of Bats and Wobbuffet to bring the Manectric into a position where it can be KO'd. 
Now, I don't really... I know he's got an energy there. I don't see a huge problem. And actually, he's going to need the muscle band here. So weirdly, the residual damage earlier probably would have been better on this second Wobbuffet. Um, now, we see the goal back coming up here. And it's just going to do 30 damage somewhere, one would presume. Uh, it's going to do 30 damage to something. Oh, it's going to do... What's the something? What am I talking about? He's got a muscle band here. He's got the KO. Doesn't look like he's got the muscle band, unfortunately. Does he have an energy switch in hand? If he did, that would be awesome. Because that energy switch could you be used to take an energy from the damage manectric to the undamaged manectric, assuming your sin doesn't get the KO here. If he has got an energy switch in hand, he really should have switched it last turn. I could be seeing things, ladies and gentlemen. Energy switch, it allows you to move one basic energy from one Pokemon to another. It's not a particularly commonly played card. And that's why he should have moved it if he had the opportunity, because that's going down. But do you, I mean, if you're Seb, do you really care? I mean, you look at, okay, your sin is going to very, 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 very briefly going to be ahead by a prize. But then what? Oh, no. No, you go after the Manectric, your sin. Bad, your sin. You go after the Manectric. You've got to go after the Manectric because the Manectric is what's going to destroy your deck. Don't agree with that placement at all. So the Manectric's already got one energy. There goes the second energy. Um... Now we bring up the bat. Does he have a muscle bat? No, it was a VS Seeker, I think, not a not a um, energy switch. That makes a lot more sense. So there comes another Zubat down. Now that Wobbuffet is on 70, which means what Seb's going to do, and what you see Seb's doing so beautifully in this game, he's using Manectric to set up multiple KOs. Oh, it doesn't look like he's got a muscle band, actually, which kind of sucks. So he's actually not... Ah, oh, if he had the muscle band... Oh! Ha! Huh? That'll do it. Now he gets to do 40 to the goal bat and KO that benched Wobbuffet with the muscle band in one turn. There's no point in putting a 20 on goal bat. It's not going to be a KO anyway. So now he puts 20 on that benched Wobbuffet. And you know that Seb was doing this last turn. When he did that 60 damage to the Wobbuffet, he was thinking, well, if I do 60, that brings it down to 40. So if I can drop a goal bat, and then hit him with the residual damage from Manectric's overrun attack, the 20 to the bench, and that's going to be another 40, which will get the KO. And you see, it's worked absolutely beautifully. Okay, they're even on prizes, and it's Yasin's turn, but look, we've got an undamaged Manectric, and Yasin's attackers are doing a maximum of 30 right now. And then and we see that the Delta Evolution ability there allows him to just go shop it, Wobbuffet, uh, shop it, Burnett straight away. Whereas Seb's got an undamaged 2 energy Manectric. And a Wobbuffet that he can just do 20 bench damage and kill. If he's got a Muscle Band and Lissandra next turn, he can take out the Wobbuffet and the uh, Zubat and go down to just, you know, one prize left. In fact, and this is, oh no, Evolution Jammer. That's a pain. And the Evolution Jammer is going to work really well for your sin here because what Seb would be able to do is drop a Golbat and KO the Wobbuffet, and then drop a Crowbat onto the existing Golbat, putting the Zubat down to 30, it's down to 20, allowing him to be KO'd by the residual damage from Manectric's attack. Here comes the Enhanced Hammer on the Mystery Energy, um, and then, obviously it had to be that one, the other one's getting, no, what, there is an Energy Switch, I'm not talking stupid. Oh, it's Energy Retrieval. Those Sacred Rare cards can be hard to read. Gets him two Basic Energy... From the discard pile. We saw him discard one of the energy earlier. It's not really come back to bite him like that. So he's sticking energy on the um, on the Shaman. And what Seb's going to be thinking here is, I don't want to let him win by KOing Shaman. So let's get ready to bring one of the Shamans back. Uh, we see a VS Seeker for a Lissandra, for the Zubat. And this is going to be cool here. Now, he's not going to get the KO unless he's got the muscle band, which I don't think he does. But what he is going to do is he's going to hit it for 40. Oh, okay. I thought he was going to hit it for 40. Oh, no, I don't like that at all. What he should have done was hit it for 40 
and then KO'd the Wobbuffet with the residual damage. He's let himself... He's let himself leave a Wobbuffet on the bench, which has got an energy and a muscle band. The other Wobbuffet has no energy, ladies and gentlemen, which means it was just going to be Evolution Jammer next turn. I could have... And it doesn't matter if you leave the Zubat on 10 damage, because either you kill it with the residual damage from Manectric, or you kill it from a Golbat or a Crobat next time you get to drop something. So I, I don't like that play from Seb there at all. He's been working the multiple KOs beautifully this game. And he just didn't that turn. The other thing, of course, if he hits the um, Zubat for 40, and now that KO's off the table. Had he hit the Zubat for 40, remember Zubat's got a retreat cost. So even though he doesn't kill the Zubat, he forces Yusin to get a switch or maybe evolve it into a free retreating Golbat. Either way, he forces Yusin to get it out of the active while Seb takes the prize and leaves Yusin with only Evolution Jammer. Now the, now the door is open for Yusin. Now he's got those Wobbuffets going. Now he's going to be able to try... And if, he, and if that second Manectric goes down, Seb's screwed. Seb right now would be down to two prizes, and he could just sit there and try and kind of, you know, well, I suppose, he actually, the last two prizes would be fairly difficult to take. Even the bench star Wobbuffet, he needs a Lissandra and a Muscle Band. Presumably, we saw Yasin get the AZ, so had Seb done that last turn, presumably Yasin would have picked up the, the Zubat. That hasn't made the biggest difference in the world. But even so, that now that Manectric's on 80, we are threatening a Wobbuffet KO late. I say we're threatening. Yasin is threatening a Wobbuffet KO here. And now we're in the weird position where, despite what I said earlier on, Yasin is now actually in a position where he probably should have scooped earlier in game one to save a little bit of time. I don't know if we're going to have time for a game three here. Um... Oh, beautiful play from Seb there. Love it. That has really, really helped him out. What he's going to really want to do here is attack the Bonnet with... Um, and remember, he needs no energy to do so. So he's got that Bonnet. He can just attack it with that um, Crobat. And now we are rolling. Now remember that the Bonnet is weak to Dark, not to Psychic. So it's only going to do 30. However... That's fine. And we see a bird. She hits her head. She's getting seven cards. Because now the net's down to 60 HP. Which means now that Crowback can free retreat, assuming he's not dead. And the Manectric can come up and get the KO. And here's the weird thing about your Sin's deck. It's one of those few decks that doesn't prey on Shaman. Which is weird. It can't just come up and get the Shaman KOs. You know, most decks, oh, I'm down to two prizes, let's Lissandra a Shaman, boom, I done a win. No, because Yasin can't really do more than, like, I think his best attack is using Bonnet's Curse Deeply to drop five damage counters for one energy, assuming there's a Dimension Valley in play. One thing I really like from Seb this game, he's left that Dimension Valley in play, which has given him a free attack on his Crobat. Last turn, he was able to attack with the Crobat and attach an energy to the Manectric. Next turn, all he needs to do is drop one energy onto that Manectric. He gets a KO on Bonnet. He's down to one prize, and there's a Wobbuffet with 80 HP left, which means one Muscle Band and that Wobbuffet he dared. Or indeed, once Bonnet stops mucking about, you don't even need the Muscle Band. You can literally just drop a Crowbat or a Golbat, and then KO the Wobbuffet. So as long as Seb's got an energy, I would expect him to win in two turns. The only way Yusin can possibly win in this turn and the next is by KOing an EX, and he's not going to do so. Now, even that Bonnet's Evolution Jammer only hits for 40. Now, this is a risky play here. Seb needs one turn with bats to set himself up for the two-turn win. This turn is going to do it. And again, there's going to be no KO here. He's on 40, which means Wobbuffet hits for 50, puts him up to 90. Crobat's still got 40 HP left. Here comes a level ball. That's going to be for a goal bat. That is going to be dropped presumably on... 
Well, if he's got a Crobat as well, the active Wobbuffet. If he can drop Crobat and Golbat, then he can put the Wobbuffet up to 50, leaving him on 60 HP, which means he can get the KO with Manectric. And that's what he... So he must have that second energy here. He puts the Wobbuffet up to 50. Wobbuffet's got 60 HP left. He drops a second energy down here. Oh, he's got the Sycamore, so he thinks he's going to get the energy. If he gets a second energy here, he, and he has straight away, he can free retreat the Golbat. And then he is rolling. Now here, he does want to put that Skyfield down. He needs to put the Skyfield down. He wants to... Yasin's got a very, very weak way of winning here. And, yes, you know, Seb wants to take that away. He does, Seb doesn't need to be attacking with bats anymore. So he can afford to get rid of the Dimension Valley. It's a small play and it might make no difference in the scheme of things. But I really believe he should get rid of it there. He's probably going to win next turn regardless. But just little things like stopping the Burnett using Curse Deeply to drop five damage counters and get a KO. Or, you know, stopping Wobbuffet attacking for one energy. Things like that could, I, mean, I don't know, but they could end up being big. And the Skyfield does come down. Goodbye, Dimension Valley. As I've said, probably a little play, but I like that Seb dropped it there. It's probably inconsequential in the scheme of things, but there's just, you never quite know what your sin's going to try and do, and that Dimension Valley gives options for your sin. So as soon as Seb drops down the Skyfield, assuming your sin doesn't have another Dimension Valley with which to replace it, those options are gone. So, Seb here. He's got the KO with the Manectric. He's going to do 60 damage. He's going to KO the Wobbuffet. And barring some kind of miracle here, he's going to win this match 2-0. And he's going to go on to be the Seniors Champion. And congratulations to him. At this stage, I should probably say thank you to the venue in London, whose name I've forgotten, I'm really sorry. for. Um, but I know it's organised by John Hawkins. Thank you to those chats for letting us do the streaming. Very much appreciated. Thank you to whoever's doing the streaming. And if Terry isn't doing the streaming, as I know he might not be, thank you for at least setting up the technology. Even if you're not there pushing the buttons, I appreciate the work that's gone into setting up the streaming streaming. He is a lovely chap. And of course, thank you to Seb and Yasin for agreeing to be on the stream. Although little known fact, because most people don't seem to realise this, by going to Pokemon tournaments, you do implicitly um, agree, impliedly agree to be on stream, have your photos used for promotional materials. So actually, you cannot say you're not going to be on stream. Now, the vast, vast majority of organisers aren't going to turn around and make you be on stream, but it is there in the terms and conditions of these tournaments, I believe. Now, what your sin's going to want to try and do here, potentially, is drag up a Shaman. If he can drag up a Shaman... Oh, there's a VS Seeker, and he's going to get... Is it Seb's turn? Oh, they're counting out VS Seekers. He's used three, he's used all four. So Seb has used all four VS Seeker. Doesn't matter. Wobbuffet's at 30. We know he's got a muscle band in hand. Lissandra brings up the Shaman. Now, what Yusin is going to try and do here is take out the Shaman, then take out the Crobat. But we see he's got an energy there to retreat. He's got the muscle band. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be quick. There is, well, I say it's going to be quick. It doesn't look quick right now. Let me just double check Shaman EX's retreat cost. It is one. So as long as Seb's got an energy with which to retreat, he's got no problem here. He can retreat the Shaman, whack on the muscle band, KO the Wobbuffet, and he wins the game. He's got the energy. He's got the muscle band. I don't, oh, oh, and he doesn't even need the muscle band because he had the crow back. KO's become senior champion. Congratulations to Seb Simmons. Beats Yasin Balala in the final of the seniors. Congratulations to them both. A really good game. Now I'm going to go away so I can try and upload this as soon as possible. So I can be back with the next round. I'm trying to upload these on a slight delay. I've even tried to get two computers going. So I can be uploading one while I'm recording the other. Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know that you appreciate what I'm doing here. Or let me know I'm wasting my time. I'm fine with either. Thank you very much for listening. Like, comment, subscribe. You know how YouTube works. Thank you very much for listening. And don't, don't show me your prizes, you sin. As I've said before, if you don't have six good prizes, you've built a bad deck. You should always have good stuff prized. If you've got bad stuff prized, why is it in your deck? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.